Hello, and welcome back to Math 301, Introduction to Combinatorial Theory. And today I'm gonna to show you um, a magic trick from my child's magic set. And the idea is that you ask somebody to pick a number between one and 60. And then you show them these six panels. Each of these panels has 30 numbers written on it. And you ask them to tell you which panels it's on. So in this case, my alter ego picked its favorite number and, uh, and then told me that it was on these three panels, the pink, the red, and the navy. And then very quickly, I can tell my alter ego that the favorite number must have been seven. So how does this trick work? Well, when you look very closely, I know these numbers may be backwards for you, but if you look very closely at this panel, you can see that all the numbers are odd. So by saying that it's on this panel, we know this number is odd. You can also look at this panel and see that the numbers on this panel are all bigger than 32 or at, at least 32. So because it's not on this blue panel, we can see that our number must be between one and 31. But what information are we getting from these four panels? That seems a little more subtle. So here, for instance, this pink panel has some numbers like two, three, six, seven, 10, 11, 14, 15, 18, 19. So we have to think about what pattern is going on with those numbers and, and how, how are these six panels enough to narrow down a number between one and 60? So after some reflection, you might think, hmm, all right, six panels, and to be in or off of each panel, that's two to the six choices. And two to the six is 64, which is even more than 60. So it's conceivable that there could be enough information on these panels to tell you, to uniquely identify a number. So we started with this, we started with this navy blue panel, and we're gonna think about this in terms of a binary tree. So uh, in this case, um, what this is called a search tree. In this case, the, the roots, the root of this tree, the vertices really don't stand for anything until we get all the way down to the bottom. And unfortunately I didn't have time to draw all the options out, but there would be two to the six options down on the on the bottom. And those vertices at the bottom uh, would be labeled with the numbers one through 60 or maybe one through 64. So in this case, the vertices, um, um, at, this is called the root, it's at the very top. And it basically represents a state of no information. And once we move into this saying that we're on the blue, the navy panel, that gave us some information. It gave us that the, the number we're aiming for is odd. Whereas if we'd gone off the other way, it would have been even. So let's now look at this, this red panel a little bit more closely and try to think about what's going on with the numbers on this, on this panel. So those numbers are two, three, six, seven, 10, 11. So what's going on here? We're getting pairs of numbers and then we're skipping two numbers and then pairs of numbers and then skipping two numbers. And so that lets us know that we should maybe think about looking at these numbers mod four. And when you look at all of these numbers, mod four, you can see that the even ones are all two mod four, because when you divide them by four, they leave a remainder of two, and the odd ones are all three mod four. And meaning that when you divide them by four, you leave a remainder by of three. So um, we were on this red panel, and so we need to go in this direction down this binary search tree. I should have said this is a binary search tree because 
each vertex has sort of two, two children. And what makes it a tree, we'll talk more about that later, but it's a tree because these vertices never make cycles with each other. All right, what was next? Oh no, I got them out of order. I think the pink one was next. Okay, so let's take a look at the numbers on the, on the pink one. So here we get four, five, six, seven. And then we skip four and then we go to 12, 13, 14, 15. And so we're skipping four out of every eight. So that gives us a clue that we should be looking at something mod eight. And it turns out these are the numbers which are four, five, six, or seven mod eight. And you can look at the higher numbers on the panel and see they also fit that pattern. All right, so let's think about why this might be making sense. So if we look mod two, half the numbers are even and half the numbers are, are odd. So this is going to narrow down our, our choice by a factor of two. This one, we had two options mod four. So that's half the options mod four. So that again is gonna whittle down our options by a factor of two. And then we've just done that again with the pink. We said we were on the, the pink one. And so that again, whittles down our, our options by a factor of two. Okay, and then we were not on the green one. Uh, the green one turns out to be a option of what's happening mod 16. It turns out it's the later options mod 16. So we can say by not being on the green one, we can say that we are in the first half of numbers mod 16. That means one of the smaller numbers mod 16. And then we weren't on this uh, blue one either. Oh no, sorry, the black one comes next. We were not on this black one either. So uh, imagine it, we have two options coming down here and the black would be going left, but we weren't on that black one. So we're gonna go down. And then we were not on uh, the blue one. So, uh, so we go so not we go down this way in here. It turns out there's a unique option down here represented by a leaf of this tree. And anyone want to make a guess which number it is? That's right, it's the number seven. And the idea is that each of the numbers from one to 60 uh, would be one leaf of this tree, which I didn't draw the whole tree. So uh, for those of you who have seen the binary representation of a number before, what these panels are really telling you are the digits of the binary representation. So the fact that we were on the Navy panel told us that we were one mod two. And so that let, meant that our last digit in our binary representation should be one. And then the fact that we were on the red panel told us that we were either two or three mod four. And that, that tells us when we look mod four in the binary representation, that gives us the last two last two digits. And, and so, so the red panel, maybe I'm, uh, the red panel, maybe I should make this a little more clear. If there's a blue here, you put a one here. And if you're not on the blue panel, you put a zero. Similarly, if, the, if you're on the red panel, you put a, a one here. And if you're not on the red panel, you put a zero. And then uh, the pink, you put a one there if you're on the pink panel. And then, which came next, green. Uh, and we, we were not on the green panel, so we're gonna put a, a zero there. We weren't on any of the other panels, so we're gonna put a zero, zero, zero. Those stand for the black panel not being on that and the blue panel not being on that. And so this is the binary representation of my number. And so working this out in regular form, we know that this counts for the number one. This digit represents the number two. This digit represents the number four. Uh, and then I added 
zero copies of eight, zero copies of 16, and zero copies of 32. And so altogether, that is the number seven. So this was a fun magic trick uh, for my kids, but it represents really important aspect of trees that we're gonna be covering in chapter nine. The idea is that anytime you wanna do a search algorithm, it is absolutely fastest to uh, do this in terms of a, a binary tree where you split the options, half of them going one way and half of them going the other. And so any kind of alphabetization, alphabetization algorithm or sorting algorithm uh, uses these, these binary trees. Trees come up uh, in a lot of other ways too. We're gonna see later on the idea of a spanning tree where you start with a graph that's not a tree that, that has cycles. And then you, you want to start at a vertex and get to all the vertices in the graph, but you don't wanna get there twice. So you just find one way of getting to each vertex. So a spanning tree is a great uh, way to propagate information. For instance, a, a phone tree is, a, is a, a good way of making communications between a group of people. So we're gonna talk a lot about trees in chapter nine and I'm looking forward to that. See you next time.